Okay, shall we start now? My name is Evgenia Pali. I'm the product manager on the Benelux market in Synology. Today's webinar will be in the form of tutorial. We're going to learn how to use the new package for photo management called Synology Photos. The goal is to introduce you to the main possibilities and features of the application and demonstrate you how to use it in practice, as well as show you its advantages compared to public clouds. We also have a special guest today, a professional photographer who will join us at the end of my presentation and he will show us how he uses Synology Photos and will give his feedback. It's going to be fun, so please stay until the end. When we at Synology develop our products, we focus on data protection and security. This is extremely important when we talk about personal photos and videos, whether they are selfies, photos of the most important moments of your life, or professional photos. All these images need to be well protected since you will need them over time. However, when choosing a cloud photo management software, you must also take into account the pricing policies that will determine the cost of the storage. In the market, there is already a lot of public clouds, such as OneDrive, Dropbox, iCloud, or Google Photos. However, we must not forget that when using a public cloud, we are renting a space from a, uh, in the cloud from a third party who will always have the power to change the usage terms and price policies. This is exactly what recently happened in the case of Google Photos. They changed their pricing policy, and since June 2021, it is not anymore possible to save unlimited photos and videos for free via Google Photos. On the contrast, when using a NAS solution to back up your personal data, you benefit from complete security and ownership of your data. We must also add uh, that it's a cost-effective solution, as it requires only the initial investment, and then there are no additional charges. As you know, until now, we use two photography solutions for different types of users. PhotoStation was designed to approach professional users, such as photographers and advanced users, as it offered more customizable features for multimedia management, like organizing folders, managing permissions, and protecting share links. On the other hand, Moments was created for home users and photography lovers who take photos casually from their mobile devices and who want to be able to easily share their photos and have them all stored safely and always have access to them. This is why we offered such features as facial recognition, a minimalist timeline, and multi-platform access. Thus, we had two different solutions for two different target groups. Over the years, we discovered that Synology users would love to see the features of both applications in one single package. Synology developers heard you and merged both solutions into one, and now everything you need to manage photos is in one application called Synology Photos. Many users wonder how to get started with the new package and update their current application. I will show you now a demo on how to migrate from Moments or PhotoStation to Synology Photos. First, you will have to check the DSM version that you currently have and update it to the latest DSM version. For that, you will have to go to Control Panel, Update and Restore, and you will see the current status of your DSM. My NAS is already updated to DSM 701, otherwise there would have been a button update. Once it's done, go to the Package Center, find Synology Photos package, and launch it. Your photo uh, station and moments will automatically update and migrate to the new application. And it's ready to work. After you did that, all your photos, metadata, and folders that you have previously created will be kept when you switch to Synology Photos in the same way as they existed before. However, something that is different is the location on the file server 
and the way that we can change the volume of the Synology Photos source. Before, you could find the main folder of photo station and moments directly in the file server, the folder name slash photo. Your shared Synology photos will remain in the slash photo folder, but the personal photos are now in home slash photos. Don't forget that you have to enable the user home service you know, for personal space in the settings. The ways to manually change the source of photo folder are different for them, and I will show you now how to do that. First, let's start with the shared photos folder. We go to the file station, choose photo folder, and you will find the photos stored in a shared space. To change the volume, go to control panel, shared folder, find there the photo folder right here and click on edit on top. You will see the current location and you can choose the volume. When it comes to the photos and personal space, in the file station, you will find home with the photos folder in it. To change the source, go to control panel again. Users and group. Then you click on advanced and then manually change the volume of all home users. This will affect all the users. You may wonder what will happen to all the configuration of permissions that you have set in the photo station, like granting the users the permission to view the photos. Don't worry, all registered user permissions will be kept and fully migrated to the new application after you update it. Same applies to the shared albums. All the albums that you have created in Photo Station and Moments will automatically migrate to Synology Photos. However, the share links that you have generated for external users will change once you update to Synology Photos. So I recommend that if you have shared links, after updating the package, check these links since the users will not be able to access the albums. In any case, if you have any problems with any kind of migration aspect, photos or folders, don't hesitate to send us a support ticket to our team who will guide you step by step and have everything work right for you. Now, this was all about the backstage of the setup and let's get closer to the point and start uploading your photos to the Synology Photos application. There are different ways that you can do so using your web browser through the application directly or through a file server or using your mobile device. I'm going to show you now how it works. Let's first see how to do it from the web interface of Synology Photos. The interface is very intuitive and uploading is made very easily. Just click on the Upload Photos button and select your pictures. The thumbnails are created and the uploading task is running on the background so you can continue working in the application. And then once the uploading is done, you will be notified that the task is completed. And our pictures are here. Now we're going to see how to upload the photos from the file server. Open file station. and your photo folder. Click on Upload, select your pictures, and then when they are uploaded, they will be automatically added to your Synology Photos library. If we now go to Synology's Photos interface, you will see these freshly uploaded pictures. Another way to upload the photos is through a mobile application. This is how you can do it. We will first select the photos and videos that we want to upload from the phone, which is actually doing a backup. 
we can now click on the view status button that appears in the bottom to visualize the loading process. You will find here the loading queue. The thumbnails are created immediately and as you can see, the loading is done very quickly. If we now go to the settings, there are different actions and customizable parameters available. For example, it's possible to restart a post task to decide whether we want to save only the new photos that will be taken from now on or to back up everything that you already have in the gallery. Or you can also select the option of saving only the photos and only on Wi-Fi. Finally, you can also do the same in your photo folder in Windows Explorer and transfer the photos, uh, the photos to the NAS via SMB or using your USB device. And once the data have been uploaded, you can start using Synology Photos and you are giving the perfect tools to manage your photo gallery the way that you want to. How can you browse the pictures that you have uploaded to Synology Photos? Just like it was in moments, you can easily browse your photos and videos chronologically, so it's very convenient to view the images by upload date. However, it's also possible to change to a more traditional folder view, like in a photo station, especially when we have shared folders or we want to organize photos by events or projects. As you can see, we are there in chronological view. You can scroll through your photos and also you can filter them at your convenience by the file type, photos or videos, by the time when the image was made, the people that appear on the photos or the geo position if available. If we now click on the middle icon at the top right, so the four small squares, you will see that we switch to the folder view, which is a more traditional way to browse your photos. You also have the possibility to add text to your images to better organize the photos in your albums. Let's see it now too. To add a tag, select a picture, click on the information button, and then add the tag. Let's tag this tiger photo with animal tag and this waterfall with nature. Albums containing different tags will automatically be created and you will find them regrouped if you go to Album, Tags, and now you can see an album for animals and an album for nature tagged pictures. There are actually different ways that you can create and organize your albums. We have integrated artificial intelligence into Synology Photos to create albums by grouping people, places, or by any other tag that you can think of. Additionally, you can create your own albums. We believe that this will allow you to relieve these memories in a simplified way. There is also a possibility to set custom conditions and let Synology Photos group matching images and videos. It is called conditional albums. I'm going to show you now how to create one. Let's take the example that we want to create an album for our family holidays. We will set the conditions and Synology Photos will sort all the images of recognized people in this album. We are now going to create a conditional album that we will call Family Album. Then we will select the different people that we want to appear in it. And you will notice that it's also possible to choose whether the album is created in the personal or shared space, select the time the images were taken, or if you want photos or videos or both. We are now adding the members of Sam's family. And you see how we can quickly create the family album and we will then find all the photos on which each of the people selected in our conditions appears. These albums can easily be shared with, me with family members and friends. Even if they don't have an account on your NAS, you can generate a share link with just a few clicks. 
Or if we take, for example, the professional context, there is a very handy way to share the images with your colleagues or clients. For example, imagine all the photos that a photographer needs to take and the client needs to validate it remotely. Thanks to the shared space, it will be possible to take advantage of Synology photos in a professional way. Advanced settings will allow you to precisely define the permissions according to albums, the users, or whether the file is public or private. It will also be possible to set a password for the most sensitive files so that they are completely secure. We will now see a demo to illustrate this. Let's imagine that we want to share a folder with our client in order to get their feedback. To share a folder, we're going to click on sharing permission from the menu on top right corner. We can now activate the share link and then enable the password protection. Once this is done, all we have to do is copy the link and validate the settings. I will now open the browser to show you what it looks like for an external person who receives the link. We just paste the link and enter the required password. You will see that the person receiving a share link will only be able to open it after entering a password. And moreover, they will only be able to view the photos in the shared folder. Finally, how many times has it happened to you that you want to search for the specific photo and you have to scroll through your entire gallery for a long time to find it? For this, we have developed the smart search feature in Synology Photos. With the search filters, it became much easier to find images and you can apply filters based on facial recognition, location, the year the photo was made or even combine them all. In addition, this function is excellent for photographers since they can uh, filter the images based on certain metadata of the camera, such as objective type, exposure, ISO or lens type, and so on. Let's now see a demo and first try simple filters. We, cl we click on the filter icon and for now only the file type and the time taken are selected. We will now add people and location. We apply the settings and the photo displayed are updated. Let's say that these are the photos taken with your best friends during a trip. If you select Ashley, for example, all the photos that Ashley appears in will be shown. If we add Charlotte, it will update the camera roll with her pictures and same with Jessica and Sabrina and Sam. Then we select the year that we want and the photos are narrowed down. You can see it's very simple and intuitive. And now we're going to use um, more advanced search filters, which will be very useful for photographers. We click again on filter to add new criteria. We will select the aperture, the lens, and also the exposure time. We click on apply and then on the right hand side, you will see the filters menu is updated. If you select a specific exposure time, you will notice that the displayed photos update. You can now combine this exposure time with a specific objective. And there is only one photo left. This is super convenient, right? It's also great to know that you can enjoy your photos on a big screen thanks to the possibility to cast your images to a TV. You can choose Apple AirPlay or Google Chromecast for now only using your mobile devices with the help of Synology Photo app. All you have to do is select one of your albums, click on the icon of the casting platform that you have on your TV. In this case, we have the icon for Chromecast you click on it and you are ready to enjoy the photos from your TV. We all know that all users are afraid of losing some photos or videos. 
With Synology Photos, you will not have to worry about this anymore because in addition to the photo management solution, we of course provide solutions to back up your data and keep it safe. As I mentioned in the beginning, we pay special attention to data security and I will show you now how to protect your images with our solutions. Thanks to the Hyper Backup application, you have the possibility to back up the data that is stored on your Synology photos to an external destination, such as a USB, a remote Synology NAS, or to the cloud services. I will show you our cloud service, Synology C2. As you can see, we are in Synology Photos interface. We want to back up the photos. We open the Hyper Backup package. We create a new task. And you will see there the different destinations that are available for the backup. And we focus now on Synology C2 Cloud. I have already connected to the Synology account. Otherwise, at this point, the system would ask you to log in. We authorize Hyper Backup to access C2 storage. We skip this step. We also skip the next one and you will understand now why. Now it's important to select Synology Photos and you will see the folder Homes and Photos are concerned. This is why we skip the previous steps. Here are additional options like an automatic backup based on date and time that we want to activate it if needed. And also we can activate the rotation. All that is left is to validate. And you will see that Hyper Backup proposes us to run the backup right now. Let's say yes. And in a couple of seconds, the backup starts. All that is quite easy and the steps are very similar to the backup task creation for other Synology applications. So you will feel at ease with Synology Photos as well. In conclusion, Synology Photos is a solution that guarantees that photos and videos are always protected under your control and are accessible at any time and place. You can quickly and easily upload your photos and videos. The management interface is very intuitive. The application will create the albums and tags for you thanks to the inbuilt uh, AI, or you can do it manually as well. You can easily share the photos with others, whether friends or colleagues or clients, and have the peace of mind about the security of your data. So this wraps up the feature that we discussed today. And now we're going to the second part of the webinar. We invite Frank Dorhoff to join us. Frank is a professional photographer who has been using Synology for many years, and he will now tell us more about how he uses Synology photos for his work present his portfolio, give us his feedback, and also answer to your questions from the chat. So let me see if we have audio and video, I guess we do. Well, Welcome to the Synology webinar. Welcome from the Netherlands. And I see so many people from the Netherlands over there. So, hey guys, how are you doing? So, Synology. And Synology, of course, I don't have to tell you guys, that's a NAS. A NAS is a network attached storage device. That means that you have a lot of space on different hard drives. Now, one of the main advantages for a professional photographer, but also a videographer or any business that you have, is that in a NAS, your system actually pretty safe in other words for example you have five hard drives in there if one hard drive is full you just replace that hard drive with a new one you don't have to think about it anymore but most of all in the case of hard drive failure you just remove the defective hard drive put a new one in and you're good to go in the past i didn't do that and that was a lot of hassle especially when you have to copy like three or four terabytes it's terrible i would like to do other stuff but how do i use synology photos in my work because you might wonder frank you're a professional photographer you use lightroom right lightroom mobile or dropbox yeah no well the main problem is this when we prepare images for our customers we never really know what they want and it always happens they want something that well 
<laughs> we don't have with us or we didn't put online because online storage costs you one a lot of money and two you always have to be connected to the internet to upload now with the Synology photos we actually found out a very very cool way to work with Synology photos and I'm going to show you that now so I'm going to share my screen with you guys, but I'm going to do it slightly different because I like to be able to also show what I do with my hands. So this is my Synology photos. And as you can see, I do it slightly differently. Now, of course, in Lightroom, I still have my workflow for my model photography. But again, there are so many clients that ask for images and it's just impossible to put all your images online. So what we did from the Synology NAS we have in our studio, we actually created a so-called POS folder. This folder can be used by our clients, for example, to see my work. We just share that folder and we call it work. And the cool thing about this is, and this is of course a, a small version, they can just go through the album, look at one of the images and go like, oh, I really like that. And, or they can email us, or I can just give them permission, of course, to download that image, but there's more. Now, you know that we also work with tags, right? So what is a tag? A tag is, in essence, a little piece of information attached to your image. For example, we have a dog, and his name is Chewy. I have to be careful that I don't say it too loud, because Enwick isn't here, and Chewy will jump on me. So <laughs> our dog is called Chewy, right? So we just label every single image we have from Chewy, and we create a conditional album. So we press the plus, set conditions to create an album, and we very simply just go to enter keywords, in this case, so it's Chewy. And at that point, you will create an album with the images from our dog. And let's be honest, he's cute. So anyway, so I have this of my dog and you might want to like, okay, Frank, so why? Well, I also have parents, right? And of course, you can teach your parents to download Dropbox, to download OneDrive, to download whatever you want. But often that is a little bit difficult, especially for people that are a little bit older. So what we decided is to use Synology Photo actually for one, to store the POS folders. So if Sony or BenQ or Synology needs an image from me, they can just go through that folder and they can download those images. But I also back up my, well, my Sony smartphone. So every image I take will be uploaded to my Synology NAS at home, meaning when we are in Belgium, for example, for a show, and Enrique and I are in the elevator, we can literally just take the picture. And when I'm home, I now know for sure that it's there. And like, for example, just before the seminar, I took this picture, I didn't sync anything, and it's already there. So, and yes, we got a new MacBook in. Testing that out today. So anyway, so I have these different setups. Now you can also create albums with tags. And this is very cool because sometimes I don't want my customers to see all my images. I have all my images on there, but there are images that have actually the tag slideshow. Slideshow are the images that we use for our customers. So we can create different albums without even thinking about it. So we don't have to select, we don't have to copy. You just use those tags like smart albums. Now, of course, you also want to share stuff, right? Remember my parents? So we have this little album from Chewy, and I know my parents just love my dog, so they want to see the images, right? The only thing you have to do is share, and you can literally just create a share for your parents. But there's more. Now you think like, hey, Frank, that's all cool and nice, but it's all for consumers, and you're a professional, right? Yeah, but we also work with models. And you know, the thing is, when we do a photo shoot, we always promise the models, hey, you can have your images. Now, isn't it frustrating that when you have a little bit of space on Dropbox and you upload like 100 megabytes of photos or 200 megabytes or five, that all goes down from your, well, the amount of data you have available online. And it always takes so incredibly long for models to download their images. Sometimes it's the day after, sometimes it takes a month. Normally, after two weeks, we delete the images online. You know how many times a model emails, hey, Frank, do you still have those images? Hey, Frank, can you... it just drives you nuts, especially when you're abroad. Uh, yeah, I really want them this week. Yeah, we're abroad. And it gives a little bit of friction because you need that space. With a Synology NAS, we don't need that space anymore. We just put those images online, and after a year, I delete them. So because it's on a NAS, we don't feel that need for, well, storage anymore. And let's be honest, you want your images on your own location in your own NAS because there it's safe. 
So in essence, we use, to conclude this, we use it for a backup for my phone. It gives me a great, great confidence that when I take a picture, it's not gone when, when I lose my phone or when I delete it by accident. You can even set the folders it back up. So it's, it's really nice. We use it for our models. We use it for post folders. I use it for personal storage for my parents. And of course, you can also create your portfolio on it. So if you have your portfolio on it, you just literally put in an HDMI cable into your iPad or your iPhone or your Android phone, and you can look at those images on your TV screen or on any other screen you want. In all essence, at first, I didn't really like the whole photo station and moments. It was, for me, it, it just didn't click. Then when a new photos was released, now everything just clicks together. You can use it as a consumer and you can use it as a professional. And I think this is what a lot of programs miss. It's often too simple or a little bit too complicated. And I think with photos, they literally just combined everything together into a great package that works. So you see a question, what is a post folder? A post folder is actually a folder where we put in our best work. Now, if somebody like Sony or Synology or whatever needs an image, they can go to that post folder and they can actually download it. I don't know the ex exact translation for it, but I believe publicity or whatever. Just find it online. But the post folder for us is where we store my best work and our sponsors or partners can actually choose from those images. And again, we can just filter that out. So it's a really thought of solution. And that's also why we started using it as soon as Photos was released. So Synology did a great job there because I want to have it on my own NAS. OK, let's go back to our presenter. Oh, somebody asked me, how do you synchronize the Lightroom text in your own database to Synology in the photos? Franz, that's actually very, very simple. All the images that you see in my work, they actually have the tag from Lightroom. And the tag is called Slideshow. Now, when you open up one of those photos and we go to Info, you can actually see that it already has that tag Slideshow FD. So you don't need to put in new tags. You can use the tags from Lightroom. Also for Chewy, we always name Chewy in Lightroom. Of course, Chewy, all those tags are brought straight over to photos. For me, if that wouldn't work, it was a big no-no. It really has to work because I don't want to do that work double. And Synology just nailed it on the head there by using the same tags as you can find in Lightroom. It's actually the first thing I tested. And it works. OK, let's go back to the presenter, if that's possible. Perfect, Frank. Thanks a lot. It was very interesting. You shared with us your experience, and it was very helpful. Um, let's move uh, further, and uh, let's quickly see the answers to the most frequently asked questions that come from our users regarding Synology Photos. OK, OK. So the questions. Question one, is there a tool for migrating from Google Photos to Synology Photos? Yes, you can use Google Takeout for exporting your photos from Google and then use the Netflix Drive option to upload them to the NAS. Are RAW and HEIF formats displayable? Yes, on the screen you will see all the support uh, the supported formats. Frank, I guess this is something that you face every time, the different formats. Do you want to share yeah. with us how it works for you? The main problem, of course, is what we share online is mostly JPEGs because you don't put TIFFs online because they are just way too heavy. But I also want to show, uh, I want to store my raw files. Now, all the images that you saw, actually, let me just go back here. If you go for desktop picture in picture. Now, I'm using a Sony um, um, smartphone and I'm only shooting raw. So I don't like JPEGs on my smartphone because then you have the raw and the JPEG next to each other. That's something that my old Huawei did. And I always hated it because then you have to throw away the JPEGs, copy the RAWs. It's an extra step. So on the Sony, I only have the RAW file. So we just open up this one. And as you can see, when I go to info, this is a GNG file. So it's just a normal RAW file. So there's no problem at all for RAW files. And as you can see on the screen, that's all the files that are supported. I, I think that's a lot of files. And well, it just works. So yeah, RAW files work, no problem. Perfect. Thank you. Next question. 
Can our client download the photos from the shared album? Yes, they can. When creating the share link set, anyone can download in the parameters. Uh, Frank, this is exactly what you was uh, telling about your parents and clients, right? Yeah, the thing is, you, you have to be a little bit careful with this because some sponsors will actually take out all the pictures. They will just grab, grab those pictures and then the pictures are gone online. So this is something that we do tell to our sponsors and partners like, hey, just leave them there. But okay. they can download it. No problem at all. And with Synology, that works fine. Next, is there a function to delete duplicates? Actually, it is not integrated into Synology Photos. However, when you upload the photos in the file server, the system will detect if the photo already exists. Is it possible to move the source of the photos to another volume on the NAS? This is exactly what I showed you in the demo today. To change the volume of the shared folders, go to Control Panel, Shared Folder. And for the personal photos, go to Control Panel, User and Group, Advanced. OK, so thank you for all the participants. Uh, I will now check if we have some questions for Frank. Um, is there a possibility to use Synology Photos as your main repository uh, to, in conjunction with other tools like Lightroom? Right. Yeah, what, what we do, the delivering to our clients can actually be done on Synology Photo. Like, for example, if you do a family portrait, you just put them on Synology Photo, you give them the link, and you don't let them download the files if you mm -hmm. want to sell prints, of course. And they can just see the images, and they can just email you like, hey, we want those images. Or you can make it public and let them download the images. It just depends on what you want. For the models, they can download it. For a customer, when you really want to sell prints, you just make sure that they can't download the images. So yeah, everything is possible. It's very configurable. Great, thanks. Another question to you. Uh, could you tell us more about the size of the files that you are using? I have no idea what the limit is, but at this moment, we have some images on there that are 60 megapixels, and they just work. So I didn't push it further. We do have some 100 megapixel files, but they aren't in the Synology database, but I don't see any different. Maybe the guys from Synology know, but 60 megapixels is no problem at all. And there are even some TIFFs there that are like one, I believe one gig. So yeah, that works, but it's slow. If it's really big and a TIFF, I wouldn't do it online. I, there are still people that dial up. I don't know if people still use dial up, but there are still people that use slower internet to take that into account. We have um, fiber over here. So we are used to very, very fast internet. But to give you an idea, just a few years ago, we literally had to use satellite to do digital classroom because our dial-up was only 0 0.5 up and one megabyte down. You don't want to, you don't want your customer to have to download 60 megabyte files. You want your customer to download like three or four megabyte files. That's okay. So in essence, pixel size, I didn't see any problem yet with the 60 megapixel files. There's one huge file on there and that will download really, really slow. So I wouldn't do that, but I don't think there's a real, maybe the guys from Synodis, you know, I, I didn't hit a limit yet. So who knows? Thank you. The last one, do you export from Lightroom directly to the Synology photo share? Without any problem, that is possible because we have the uh, NAS actually connected in our studio to the other NAS. So we use different NAS systems in our studio. And you, you can just, it, it's just a folder. You, you can just dump it in that folder like USB or upload or whatever. It's just a folder structure. Don't be afraid. It's not like Lightroom where you do it wrong and they put it in the catalog. Your Lightroom crashes and all your images are weirdly named like 105317. And you go like, oh my, what happens? It's the same folder structure. So just dump your images on there. Some knowledge you will just fix it for you. That sounds like a commercial, right? It's that easy. <laughs> <laughs> True. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Frank, and thank you to all the participants of today's webinar. I hope that it was interesting for you and that you could learn something new. We have webinars every month on different topics, and if you're not yet subscribed to our e-news, I recommend you to do so on our website and follow up our upcoming webinars. The chat will remain open for 15 more minutes, so you can continue asking your questions. And uh, thank you. See you next time.
Hi guys, stay safe.